Today, we're going to be talking about lead generation and what companies, what sales professionals should do, be doing and the opportunities and the choices that either sales professionals, executives, particularly entrepreneurs, and what they should be doing. Welcome to the Ugly Truth About Sales podcast, live out of Miami, Fort Lauderdale, hosted by me, Victor Orocho. This podcast is about the reality of sales perceptions, executions, and the hollow statements that entrepreneurs, CEOs, and salespeople make. We discuss how to get past these ugly truths by taking action. We interview successful entrepreneurs, executives, sales professionals who share their experiences, how they've succeeded by following best practices, not only to grow their own businesses, but to grow the businesses of, of others. Okay. If you haven't yet, please follow me on Twitter at V Arocho. That's A R O C H O V for Victor, or go to YouTube, look up Victor Arocho, and I have a ton of podcasts there. I have a ton of training videos there, and please use them however you would like, and hopefully that helps you grow your company and yourself. Today's guest hosts, I have the pleasure of having David Krieger. He is the founder and president of Sales Roads, a business-to-business -business appointment setting, lead generation, and sales outsourcing company. He has been named as one of the most influential leaders in sales and management by the SLMA for the last four years running. David has led Sales Roads through significant growth and the company has twice been listed on the Inc. 5000 as one of the fastest growing, oops, as one of the fastest growing privately held companies. David is consulting some of the biggest and largest and fastest growing companies to help their organization accelerate, again, accelerate sales through proactive teleprospecting. Welcome to the show, David. Thanks, Victor. Great to be here. Great. Well, I appreciate the time. And one more thing that, that my, my, my entrepreneur friend and so forth, got to give him credit. He is a Wharton grad, went to University of Pennsylvania. So I got to give him a lot of props. He's super smart. So David, I have um, some questions and we want to talk about your company um, and then how we can help other people. And you understand the, the, the when I say the hollow truths, where a quick example is when people say, you know, manage what you, uh, you can't manage what you can't measure. And what I found in my experiences in meeting with entrepreneurs and businesses of companies from five to a hundred million, that um, it's hollow because they're not, not measuring stuff because they're not, they can't, they're not taking the right data to measure to move to be more successful. So if you don't have the data to measure, how can you manage it, right? So absolutely. my first question for you in what you do is what mister, misunderstandings in your journeys, you know, not particular clients, prospective clients or clients, and I'm sure you sat down with some of these uh, companies with multiple decision makers, what misunderstandings or misconceptions do sales leaders have on obtaining qualified appointments? Yeah. So, you know, the, the first thing that comes to mind, and I think, you know, part of the reason it rings hollow is we hear it over and over and over again, is, is cold calling is dead. Um, and, you know, I, I, the thing is that cold calling is dead if you're doing it the same way that you were doing it five, uh, 10 years ago and even five years ago. Um, but, you know, if you aren't having your, your reps or if you don't have a team of SDRs that are intelligently cold calling um, and just having them use, you know, email or just use LinkedIn or maybe not prospect at all because you think that cold calling is dead, um, I'll be honest, you know, you're going to be dead. <laughs> you know, your, your competition is going to eat your lunch because they're figuring out how to uh, prospect do do intelligent cold calling in 2019. Um, and and I, I believe in, in many ways that this is the golden age of, of cold calling um, or, or, or targeted proactive outreach. Um, you know, we've been in sales a, a long time, right, Victor? Like when 
before have we been able, before even picking up a phone or writing an email or, or reaching out in any way, know so much about a prospect? right? Not, not, not only their resume, right, on LinkedIn, but the things that they like, the things that they're engaged in, the things that they're commenting on. The, the, we can eavesdrop on their conversations, right, on LinkedIn and LinkedIn groups and things like that. Like, when before, you know, if you had told somebody who was prospecting 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that you could know all this before even picking up the phone, they'd be say, say you're crazy. And, and so, Cold calling is dead if you're doing it the same way. You're not leveraging these tools, but I really do believe that when you do it right, and I see it time and again for, for our clients, you know, for people that I, I speak with, that when you do it right, we're in the golden age uh, of cold calling. You just got to gotta incorporate all these amazing tools into your outreach. Interesting. So you mentioned a couple pieces that I want to address. And for those of you watching, the reason why I haven't shaved, this is like three weeks it takes me. And Movember's coming. Movember is uh, awareness for prostate cancer for men. And usually I start in November, but the problem is it takes so long for me to grow something that looks decent. I figure I started in October. This is the okay. First time. So I'll let you know. A shout out to Rutgers. You know, I wear a different college shirt every day. Big, uh, my son uh, goes to Florida State and my daughter, Hurricane fan, but I'm a Noles fan. That's where my kids go. So I just want to let you know what we're doing here. Um, so a couple things. One, uh, I wanted to, to, to state what it was real quick for our listeners. SLMA, uh, what organization is that? I don't want to mess it up. I know some organizations that have the same initials. So, you want yeah, to so yeah, so it's, it's the Sales and Lead Management Association. So they yeah, really, so it's, lead, sales and it's lead. all about lead generation. Um, so it's the, so really one of the, 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 the only or most important lead generation associations just, just focuses on, on top of the funnel type of, of work. Awesome. And then um, let the, uh, the uh, listeners know what is an SDR, because sometimes they don't know what an SDR is. Yeah, so it's a sales development representative that really works on that, that, that cold prospecting. So helping the, the account executives, you know, uh, you know uh, I mean, there's lots of words for that, but people who are really trying to close deals to, to really work that top of the funnel for them, um, nurture new, new prospects, find new prospects that are good fits for, for that company's product, warm them up, get a qualified appointment, and then pass that out over to the account executive to then take that, that through the, 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 the sales pipeline. Interesting. And that goes back to um, where sales is really going to that it should have been a long time ago, where it's in sales uh, specialization by each part of the sales process. And totally. it's always been happening. It's, it's always been around in, in complex sales, particularly in engineering or uh, technology, because you'd have a, a person getting it started. They weren't really an SDR, but then it would go to a sales engineer and then it would work its way through and sometimes to a closer. So they could be four people involved in a sale based on the size. <coughs> of it. Um, it's the SDR today, um, it, I think is very important, but a lot of companies don't, understand they want salespeople to go from cradle to grave right when i say cradle to grave they want do your own lead uh, uh assessment unless you're doing some great marketing and it's um, it's coming in and then salespeople get complacent which is terrible or uh you know they get frustrated because they have to do all the work that they need to do but you know that's part of life you got to that's what this is about you have options you either work with a company like sales roads or you have to develop your own and figure out how to get these leads to the next level or you need to teach what we're going to talk about a little bit of how to do some lead generation which you mentioned a little bit um and now i'm going to go uh, i'm just going to ask the next one we're going to talk about like the research preparation 20 you said a long time ago um uh, and um you know, I'm 54, so I've been in sales all my life and running multiple companies and leading companies. Uh, there was a time that, you know, when I was traveling, depending on, you know, I was uh, a, a lot of in the insurance business, we went at the distribution insurance agencies, wherever I would travel, there used to be yellow pages in the hotel rooms. I'd go to the, my section and rip out the entire list, and that's how I got my list, right? right. And, and even to the point that I had to buy a map book, right? I had to buy a map book to be able to get around. Today, okay. I can go um, Google Maps, I can route my maps. I mean, so I'm just yeah. going back to what was 
it, we're doing the same thing today that I learned from my mentor on Fridays is that the only thing that's changed are the tools, the vehicle to do the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Which is faster, more efficient. Um, but on the opposite end, our clients are more, um, more uh, intelligent, right? Because they're looking on, online. So, um, so how does uh, the company- Or Victor, just to even stop you there, because I think it's an important point, because I think a lot of people do talk about how 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 buyers are more intelligent, right? They've they've researched, you know, seventy. I think the facts are, you know, they're seventy percent through the sales journey. Sometimes, especially that's you know, on inbound leads before uh, before they even engage with a salesperson. And so I I would argue though too that that salespeople need to be at least seventy percent more intelligent, right? And know seventy percent more about their prospect before picking up the phone and 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 building their list and things like that. And so I think it we we focus on how the buyer is more intelligent through through the internet and these new tools. But I think as sales professionals, we have to think about how do we make ourselves more intelligent because we have as many tools as that buyer does now to learn about them and their needs and, and, and figure out who are the right buyers who can really benefit from the services that we're offering and in what ways can they benefit. And we have those at, the, at our fingertips now. Exactly. And, and, um, and that's, a, that's a great point, right? Sometimes uh, salespeople or, and, and look, it's not even just salespeople, really. I'm looking from the top. That's why I said executives, because it starts from the top, okay. right? And if they're, it's particularly entrepreneurs, and we'll talk about that, right? If you're a sales entrepreneur, a little bit different story. But, but, but also, I've seen sales entrepreneurs that have a difficulty skill <clears throat> because they're great at getting their company to a certain level because they're the best salesperson and executive, and they own the company. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to hire someone just like them and... I keep telling them, well, you're, you're going to hire a competitor. That's all you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. Um, and then we'll, I want to get into some of that a little bit in, uh, later. Okay, so some of the misconceptions that they have, okay, you have mentioned some of that. So how, do, how, do you, how does your company solve some of those perceptions that, um, you know, you're not preparing, you're not doing the research? Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, the, the, the first thing is, you know, it, just like you said, and this is this is this goes back to to the fundamentals, is is you've got to have a strategy, right? So so you've got to think through, really understand what your value proposition is. So we work with our clients to really understand what that value proposition is and how it relates to to different types of buyers. Um, and so we, you know, I think that it's really important to to start with that fundamental. You know, if you don't really understand what 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 your value is, and who your target customer is. Um, you know, it's going to be very hard to proactively go out and, and find those types of people uh, and really be able to help them. And so we really work with our clients uh, at, the, at the beginning. It's almost a mini consulting uh, assignment where we're really working with them to really refine, define that, that value proposition. Um, and then what we do is we, we take that and then we build a multi-channel approach. So, you know, you don't want to just cold call, you know, you want to have informed call, cold calling, right? You know, as I said, so we need to think through how do we look up the, the different prospects? How do we build that, that list through LinkedIn that, that helps us to know that we're targeting the right types of folks? So we develop all of that and we have a whole data team that's really going through LinkedIn, through the web, through different uh, data channels to build that list of, of potential prospects for our clients and really build a good TAM in that, that way. Um, and then we try to execute on that strategy through you know, the cold calling through, through, through emails uh, and through LinkedIn outreach, and we build a cadence around that. So you, know, you can't just call, call someone, you can't just email them, you can't just leverage LinkedIn. It's really a, a concerted effort through, those are you know, three primary ways, um, and really building a, a iterative cadence around that based upon your value proposition to nurture that prospect, you know, give them little value nuggets to learn about them, and then have a meaningful conversation about what their needs are and how we can help them. Excellent. And let's, let's give, um, can you give me just those three bullet points real quick? Yeah. So, so, uh, the three, three, three sort of quivers. So, so one is, you know, uh, is, is, you know, having that, that strategy and understanding how to think through and build that list and, and, uh, of prospects, uh, cold calling through, and then the, the email LinkedIn cadence that's part of that, that cold calling strategy. Okay. Awesome. And, um, so let me ask you a question. Why, when should a company outsource for finding qualified leads? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, 
there are if a company has the the resources, the time, um, and the patience, you know, and and, and the skill set to build a proactive prospecting uh, program, then it's something that they can do internally. But they need to have the the knowledge, you know, that the, they really understand how to use the the levers and the and then the. the and uh, and this multi-channel approach, uh, they need to have the, the the team in place to manage the SDRs because you can't just throw SDRs into it and just hope that they're going to do great work. You have to have somebody who's going to train them and who's going to coach them and is going to work with them and really listen to them, hear what's working, what's not working, iterate on the strategy, um, and then you have to you know be able to to invest in that process because it, it it takes time to both build your team and find the right strategy so if you have those resources you have that management you have that time then it it's something you could do internally if you are a a startup company uh that maybe has some some financing but doesn't have you know a, a head of inside sales that can really build this type of capability internally or maybe you don't have uh you know the 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 time to dedicate to, to doing something like this, or you want to really focus on just building your product, closing deals, then it's something to, to think about outsourcing to, to an organization that really, this is all they, they focus on. They have a management team that's thinking about strategies, that's thinking about how to coach, thinking about how to find the best SDRs and place them on your, your organization, and then iterate that strategy and, and that process and coach those those reps along, it's something uh, potentially to consider outsourcing because it's not something, and this is another misconception, I think. I think some people feel that they can just hire an SDR or hire an inside salesperson and say, okay, go go get me leads. It just doesn't work that way. It, it is a process. Uh, even the best SDRs need management. They need to, to brainstorm with their manager. They need to talk about what, what objections they're hitting, what they're running into, go, go back and forth. And so it is a process. So if you don't feel that you have the resources, the time to invest in that process, then it is usually best outsourced to, to a company that really has all that capabilities in-house and can do it for you. No, I, that makes a lot of sense the way you said it. The one thing that I keep hearing you say, and um, I'm all on board, is regardless the segment you are in in sales, from a leader, from an entrepreneur, it's about processes, mm -hmm. right? So lead gen's a process, working your CRM, your pipeline, your sale, you know, your sales strategy, um, how to close everything has to be a process right totally. um so so that's that so the 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 other thing that you made made a lot of sense is a couple things one is startup entrepreneurs obviously with capital but i see a lot of times that a start whether you know they have capital or not their first inclination is hey let me hire a sales manager right mm -hmm. well that sales manager right off the bat is not going to be producing revenue right so you got to kind of figure out if, is, do you have enough of that money? And then two, you have the entrepreneur that normally, from my research, an entrepreneur shouldn't hire any salespeople until they reach the million dollar mark, mm -hmm. right? And because once they reach the million dollar mark, they know they hit that, right? That's when they can start selling because they did everything themselves, right? And then the next part of it is, is that some of the entrepreneurs that I dealt with that are sort of small entrepreneurs where they're the main person selling, they, they can't build that pipeline of qualified leads to get into the first stage of, of the, of the pipeline. Right. Mm -hmm. And the first way to do that is by lead generation. Right. And you don't know that. And if you, if you, because they don't want to be on the phone prospecting as an entrepreneur, they feel whatever it feels beneath them until they really have need money, then they're going to get on the phone prospecting, right? And then the other things, they have other duties they have to do. But if they had a, a, a bunch of qualified leads in front of them, right, and someone's setting it up and teed it up, nobody sells better than the owner of a company, right? So I just want to bring that up. Um, and so what do you see is the um, – is your biggest challenge in, in sales and, and not necessarily, you know, um, you know, you're challenging your company, but challenge you see in company sales, maybe some challenges you have in your company, right? Whether you're hiring people or finding the right people, um, but also the challenges you see in companies or, or talking or speaking with companies that just don't understand the value 
of you're paying a, a, an account manager, a sales representative, director of sales, X amount of dollars, but you're not helping them tee up a bunch of revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think, so, so first I, I think the, the, the biggest challenge that I see um, in sales, and I think it's been ubiquitous. I mean, it's for, since I started my, you know, my first inside sales team, you know, uh, which was in, in 99, I was uh, hired by the VP of sales and internet startup. And um, he said, listen, go, go start our inside sales team. Uh, I didn't even really know what an inside sales team was at that time, but I, I learned how to do it. And so even during that boom time, and we see it uh, even even more today is is finding the right people. And I know that sounds almost a little cliche and hollow going on it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down, especially with the SDR function, because I do think it is really true. Um, so, it, it, what we see today, um, especially in the SDR function, is that this is a very hard job. Right, so, so to do intelligent cold prospecting is tough. It's tough to figure out how to do it right. Um, it's tough to have the patience because it, 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 it it's, takes a long time to have wins, right? Um, and, uh, and it can be uh, a, a frustrating process for the wrong type of person. Um, it can be exhilarating for the right type of person. And so finding that right person, we see with our clients, um, and we see internally is a big challenge. So what we've done to address that challenge internally is we've invested heavily um, in, in HR, in, in finding those, those right types of people and understanding who those right people are. We have a very rigorous interview um, and testing process. Um, and so we've really invested in trying to find the right types of, of folks. Um, and then more than that, uh, or I don't know, more than that, but we've invested in, in the culture and the type of company that we have to make it the type of company that these folks want to work at and make it a place that where we attract talent and we attract people and we don't look at these these individuals as commodities because they are the last thing from from a commodity so that's a big challenge and then the other thing that we found um at our clients we don't have this because it's it's it's, it's a little bit different in agency is that it's really hard to find a really good sdr um, and so what happens is they'll hire people and a lot of times they don't work out, right? So there's high, you, you, to do this right, you have to train a lot, you have to coach a lot, you have to invest in the people, and then a lot of times they don't work out. So all of a sudden you've spent all this time, money recruiting them, training them, coaching them, if you're doing it right, and they don't work out. Then there's the small segment that work out. And a high percentage of those, after about a year and a half, want to get promoted to be an account executive, and then they move out. So this function, unlike almost anything I've seen, is a revolving door for good and for bad. And that is one of the biggest challenges that um, our clients who've tried to do it internally have said, listen, this is just, it's just too much. This is too much of a revolving door. And so that's one of the things that we really uh, try to bring to the table for our, our clients is being able to find those folks, but then our retention rate is extremely high. Um, to be able to keep those folks because we're investing in their training, we're investing in their growth, and we want to make sure they stay with us. Um, and that's one of the things we've been able to solve and we feel is a, is, is a big challenge out there in the marketplace. So, and then one more question on the challenge part. What, what seems to be the challenge when, you're, um, when you are trying to secure a client? Like, what, what are their hesitations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, to, to come to sales roads, you mean? Yeah, to come to sales roads. You, yeah. you, know, you're pro, you know, obviously no one's got a 100% close rate, right? So yeah. there's some misconceptions. But what's some of those the sales challenges that you are you're, you're, you come across um, as it relates? Because everybody has, you know, challenges. I have challenges and so forth with clients. But what kind of challenges do you have when talking to an executive or sales leader or an entrepreneur on on why it's important to utilize your service and you know you either gonna either they're a fit or they're not a fit but what do you see there the, the challenges are on that yeah so i think that there there are a few things so one is that they feel that it is that this isn't going to work they feel cold calling is dead right they've either tried it internally and it hasn't worked or they've tried it with another agency and it's fallen flat on their face and they just need to uh overcome the hurdle of thinking that this 
can work. But they're also stuck between a rock and a hard place because you only have so many inbound leads. You only have so many people in your network. And if you're not proactively prospecting, you're going to plateau. And there's no, there's, there, there's only so much growth you can have and you have competitors knocking at your door, right? So, you know, going back to where I said at the beginning, if you're, if you're, you know, cold calling is not dead, but if you don't <laughs> create a, a, a proactive cold calling program, you might be dead. So I think uh, clients realize that, but they're skeptical as to whether it can work. So we have to overcome that. And we, we, you know, talk to them about our process and we show them how we build the, the strategy and the quality of the SDRs that we have. You know, our SDRs have on average 14 years of sales experience, whereas a lot of folks, just, they have millennials that are coming in and, and going in and out. And so we have to talk, talk them through that. And that's a very understandable concern. So we talk them through that in our, our process and how we do things in order to make it successful. And then the other thing, which I think is a very real concern we take very seriously is we're representing them as their, their, their organization. And so they've got people who are cold calling on their behalf, representing their organization, because we don't call as sales roads, right? We call as our clients. And so they want to make sure that, that we're doing that in the right way. Um, and we take that responsibility very seriously. And we actually look at ourselves as an extension or even part of their, their team. We're just one more division in our, our client's team. And so they are part of the process as much as they want to be, you know, through the strategy building, through approving that, through the role plays that we do with our, our, our SDRs, through the, the, the meetings that we have. We like to have weekly meetings with our clients with the SDRs on so they can hear what's working, what's not working. Um, and so we really do take that responsibility very seriously because that is a real concern for our clients. Interesting. And, and what I found is how do they feel about, well, I like, I, I, you know, I want my people here because it's about our culture you know, that happens to us, right? We're, we manage, we manage uh, um, um, the sales leaders and some salespeople, but sometimes they, we want to start them off in our location to get everything right and manage and oversee and train. But then all of a sudden, well, I need them in my office because uh, I want them to be part of the culture and the sales team. Yeah, and so I, I would say that, that first it's not necessary to be in an office to be part of a culture. Um, and so we actually, our whole model, all of our SDRs are distributed around the country, and we've built one of the most vibrant cultures, um, and everyone is, is distributed. I mean, we, I had – one, one employee say uh, that they wanted to tattoo sales roads on their arm. They were so engaged with, with, with sales roads. And so I, I, I don't believe in this day and age that you need to sit in an office to be engaged in, in a culture. And we've built that at sales roads. But then to, to extend to what you're also saying is how do we become part of our client's culture? Because that is important. And I think that that's a two-way street. <laughs> um, that we encourage. So our, our training and our onboarding process is very rigorous. Uh, so our clients, our, our SDRs are learning as much as uh, about the, the, the client, um, about who they, they are really representing as, as they would sitting in, in the office. Uh, you know, their LinkedIn profiles become the, the client's profiles. We invite our clients to be on those trainings if they want to, you know, to, to talk to the SDRs, to, to make them part of it. We're often part of our client Slack channels. Uh, we have clients who, who like to send swag to them, you know, as, as little spiffs and things like that. Um, and it's all about how you approach the meetings and how you approach the, the concept. You know, and this is also, I think, can ring hollow, Victor, but I'll say it, you know, uh, thinking of yourself not as a vendor, but as a partner. Like none of our SDRs feel like they are just an agency. They're part of their team. They're invested in our clients' success. They are excited about the wins that the, the clients have. They want to be on the, the regular sales meetings with the clients, um, you know, be part of the, the Slack channels, the, the, the newsletters. Um, and so we really work to be part of our, our, clients, our clients' culture. And our clients who really find that valuable, which I think, I, you know, which I think is, is valuable, they engage with our, our, our SDRs that way as part of their team, um, not just a vendor. I mean, our SDRs aren't on multiple campaigns. They're not calling on five and six different campaigns and just, you know, reading off of the script. You know, they have an email address from, from our clients. They have a phone number that is in the local area code. They are part of that company. And so I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a good challenge. I think it makes it more successful in that mindset is like that, but I don't think they have to sit in the office to be part of that culture this day and age. 
I would agree with that, um, especially in the small, medium-sized businesses, right? Because if you look at the very, very large businesses, I'm talking companies over 100, $250 million, right? Because $250 million technically is a small, medium-sized business, right? All those other companies have offices throughout the country. I mean, Microsoft, I, I've dealt with Microsoft companies <coughs> And the people there, I mean, it's no nonsense. You got to hit your numbers, you got to hit your target, and they're spread out throughout the country and the world, right? But they still got a culture, right? And so it just it's just amazing to me that you know entrepreneurs out there need to understand that. And sometimes the the, the telecommuting is 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 more beneficial, right? You just got to manage it, and it's all about results. So that's excellent point, point. Um, and I could see that. Right. What, what, what you're saying. And why do you think why do you think companies and this is more on, 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 on another side? A lot of it you said, too. But I also wanted to make a comment. It, it sounds hollow is how you were saying it. The difference is, is that it, 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 they are. It is a statement that is hollow, except for it's not you're not saying it being hollow. You're executing. So for right. me, a hollow statement is stating what you said but not executing on it or, right. or, or really stating what you said, because uh, you know, me, you and a bunch of other executives or entrepreneurs are out and we're talking and we make these statements and everyone's like, yeah, you're yeah, right. You're right. And it sounds good. And then they go back to their offices and they don't execute on that. To right. me, that's a hollow statement. Totally. Right. And, and, and that's where I'm trying to say, uh, for me, it frustrates me because you hear it too much. And then what are you doing? Right. Right. Or they read a 100%. book and they go, Oh, I read that book. This was really great. Okay, great. So are you doing this? Are you doing this? Are you doing this? Okay. Why'd you read the book? Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next question is, and we're, we're going to go. So we have opened up the discussion is why do you think companies, cause this is big and I'm doing a, a, a major research on this, spend so little money on investing in their sales leadership and management. Yeah. Right? Whether it's whether spending money on the entrepreneur who's acting as a sales leader or sales manager or the entrepreneur who has a sales leader or manager, but are not investing in. If you think about it, if you invest in a sales manager, that sales manager has five to 10 or 12 people reporting to them. So it's exponential. The return you're getting. It's not a one to one. They're managing a group of people. So what is your thought process? Why are they spending money on training these frontline salesmen? Yeah. So it's a great question. And I think it probably goes down for a lot. There's probably a few reasons, but I think one of the big reasons is the, what I believe is a misconception that you can't teach sales, uh, that either you have it or you don't, that there's these natural born salespeople and they're just going to perform. And then there's the people who are just not sales people and they're never going to perform. Um, and for me, uh, this can't be further th from the truth. Um, you know, and I think I'm, I'm a prime example of that. So I'm a natural introvert. And it when I, you're a natural I, I'm a natural introvert. Yes. And so when I first started in sales, you know, I would either on a phone call or if I was in a meeting, be so nervous <laughs> that you could sometimes not even understand the words that were coming out of my mouth. Like, what's going on? You know, because I, it just was, I was in a position that I felt like I, I, it was not my natural way of being because I had this conception of what, what you had to do in sales. And that conception was from movies and things like that and was not based upon any training I got. So the smartest thing I did was I started reading a lot of books about sales and I hired a coach um, to start building um, and growing myself as, as a sales professional. And one of the things that, um, you know, I, I learned is that sales isn't about sitting there and talking to someone and pitching them and just, speaking, you know, like, you know, a natural extrovert, you know, might, might do. And then there's also obviously lots of ways that extrovert, but the way I thought you should do sales, but it's a, it's the discovery process and asking questions and learning about that prospect and learning about their needs and learning about the, the issues they have and learning about their company. And as a natural introvert, I'm down for that. <laughs> I love that. I love asking questions. I love learning about people. I love 
listening. And I'm an amazing listener. And I'd hear things and I'd hear what their issues were and I'd hear about their pain and I also love solving problems. And so I'd think through and, and, and my sales process became this voyage of discovery, which allowed me to sell. And I talked to people about this a lot. You gotta sell within your own skin, right? You gotta, you can't be someone you're not, uh, but you, 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 you gotta sell within your own skin and understand what that process is that works for you. And I believe that um, by investing in, in yourself or a company investing in sales training and, and it is the most amazing investment because you can take people like myself who was fallen flat on my face and now I run one of the most successful sales outsourcing companies in the country <laughs> just because of that investment I made in myself and training. Um, and so you can take those people who are maybe an untapped gem who you might think you know, are never going to be able to, to learn sales and make them a top producer. But you also can take those A players that you think just have it and you can take them to the next level. <laughs> and, you know, and you can help retain them because a lot of people like to, to, to grow. They like to continue to learn. Um, and I've found that the best sales people, you know, there's some sales people that think they know it all, but there, but there are a lot of sales people. And I believe the best sales people who just want to grow every day and learn uh, and put on tapes and read about sales and be coached. And if you give them that opportunity at your organization, you're more likely to keep those, those A players and you're, you're going to take them, to the next level. And so um, I think, Victor, you know, there's a few, few, reason, a few reasons, but that's one big one is that conception that sales can't be taught. And from my personal experience, there's, there's nothing further from the truth. You, you know, what's funny is um, you made a lot of great statements, one, um, and I did the same thing. And now I'm a natural um, extrovert, mm -hmm. right? And, um, but statistically, the best salespeople are introverts, mm -hmm. right? Because they don't show up and throw up or mm -hmm. they're not trying to um, go through, let me build a relationship. And, you know, you want to build a relationship, but you build a relationship by solving someone's problem. Mm -hmm. They're going to love you. But if you're going to, you know, keep whining and dining, you know, and that happens really large sales, but in, <coughs> in other sales, they, they to me, another hollow statement is it's all about relationship. It's all about, it's about relationship for networking. It's about relationship for referrals. It's about relationships for like me referring companies to you. That's different, right? But, but it's about problem solving. And then the other thing is um, you mentioned sales training for salespeople, which, which I agree, but more money spent. And this is where I want to just make sure from my perspective and my experience, the point is, that more money is spent on training salespeople mm -hmm. than sales managers. Yeah. Well, then you get a top salesperson who's promoted to a sales manager and does not know how to manage the salespeople. Yeah. You understand? So totally. my frustration is it goes back yeah. to training the sales leader, the sales manager who has salespeople under them and investing also in those salespeople, but you're going to get a, an exponential effect training a sales manager. Right. And to some degree, some of these entrepreneurs that want to grow, they need sales leadership and management training because there's leadership. Right. And there's management. And but then sales leadership and sales management, you know, there are some parallels, but there are a lot of distinctive differences. Right. And what kills me is that there's not a lot of colleges that teach sales. Right. I mean, you, you have an MBA. Right. I do. Yeah. And, yeah. And, I didn't get one sales class. And from the, one of the best, you know, business schools in the country. Right. How many of my friends tell me the same thing that I got MBAs? He goes, Vic, you know, you get an MBA to be able to run a company. So they teach you zero about sales. Now things have changed, but you know, me being 54 a long time ago, most CEOs came through the ranks of sales. <laughs> now 100%. they're technical or it's financial <laughs> or so forth, but you know, the rest of them came through sales, right? So um, I think that's valid, investing in yourself, investing in your team. I think it's, it shouldn't be only invested. The investment shouldn't only come from the business or the company. The person's got to want to have their own investment, right? And put that investment in themselves. So it should be a combination. You invest in yourself and your company should be investing in you. 
All right. So, um, and then I want to ask, I got a few other pieces that we, we're going to go to there. Is that, what book are you reading or what's the last book you're reading? Yeah. So I just, I just read um, Multipliers, um, which was, which was fascinating for me. Um, and it is about, and I think that that's, that's about one of the, the, the key things for, for sales leaders, I think, to read, because a lot of times the sales, the sales leaders, um, and this is a good, you know, based upon also the, the question, the thing that you said is that when you're promoted into sales or sales management, a lot of times you want to, and also your CEO wants you to just clone yourself, right? But you, you've got to allow your sales team to first of all, sell within their own skin and also learn the process that works for them. And you can't just prescribe it. And so if you come into every, every sales meeting, or if you'd ride along with them, or you're on a call with them, and you basically take over that conversation because you feel like they're doing something wrong or, or, or they're going in, you know, you would do something in a different way. You might leave that, that individual sales meeting in a, in a way that has a higher likelihood of closing, but you've done more harm than good because you've actually, first of all, not, not necessarily taught your, your, your salesperson to do the right thing because they're going to just try to do it the way you did. And that might not be right for them, right? They might not be able to replicate it. Um, but secondly, you've diminished them, right? You, you basically said you can't do this. And so now are you going to go and ride along on every sales meeting? Are you going to go and, and be on every single call with them? How, how scalable is that? Right. And so the, the, the concept behind multipliers is that if you approach management in a way that you are trying to continually grow and teach your team, right, versus just basically do things for them, which is a lot of times what management is doing, right, um, you can get four times the productivity out of, out of those, those people that are working for you. Um, and so it was really, uh, it's, it's a fascinating book on, on trying to approach management as a multiplier versus as a diminisher. And um, that's by Gladwell, no? That's not Gladwell. Uh, Liz Wiseman, I think. Liz Wiseman, okay. Liz, Liz? Liz, yeah. Liz Wiseman. Okay, so that way everybody knows. Um, okay, so that's great. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to me mention a couple pieces that you wrote down. So uh, h here's what I, I want to give some people some takeaways, right, as we're wrapping this up. And, and you could decide if you want to talk a lot about this. And then I want to hear, you know, tell about your company. But what I found is a lot of companies do a terrible job of identifying their ideal target client, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they don't like starting with that. They think they could sell to everybody. That's not true. Walmart doesn't sell to everybody, right? Now, you may, everybody can go in there if they want to, but there's certain, you know, there's people, class of people don't want to go in there. Target has its own client. McDonald's has its own client, um, you know, a uh, uh, Morton Steakhouse has a different client, right? So you can't sell to everybody. If you try to do that, you won't be great. Um, the other thing is your unique value proposition. They're terrible at that, right? They're, tell you, they're terrible. And, 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 and what we teach, and, and, and you know, I don't know where you're from, your value proposition has to be about the outcomes of what you deliver for a client, right? There's your unique value proposition. Um, and then... Uh, I see the segmenting of, of a list. So, so you also have, you've also segmented list building to someone, correct? Oh yeah. So it's just so important is building that, that right list. Okay. And then you also talked about cadence and that's another thing that I do not see in companies or, or entrepreneurs in their companies. They don't even understand what a cadence is. Right. So, you know, cadence by definition is a, 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 a rhythmic flow, Right. To, to come to an end result, right? Mm -hmm. And what happens is, again, you know, statistically, 90% of salespeople give up after two attempts. Mm -hmm. But if you put a sales cadence in, that sales cadence is going to require you to make nine to 15 attempts, mm -hmm. right? Because you've got to follow the steps. And another uh, piece that you mentioned, and I just want to recap some of your, your conversation is, that, you know, you go out there and you do your stuff and they want to see how you do it and they're enamored. So if I go out there, go, oh my God, that was great. I want to be just like that. I teach, look, the fundamentals need to be the same, but I need you to be you. Absolutely. Adapt it to how you, you're, you know, if I'm an extrovert and you're an introvert, you can't do what I'm going to do, right? Exactly. 
number one. Number two, you got to understand the years of experience and learning and practice that I have that you need to get to. But understand the fundamentals that I'm teaching you. I always tell people, and I get calls today, that I'll, you know, we'll, we'll develop, we'll transform people. And two years later, they'll call me up and say, you know, Victor, what you taught me, I actually, I used, and it was amazing. What we teach today may not work right at this moment, but just we're building up all your tools to put in your toolbox. 100%. Makes sense? Um, a process. And, and the other thing is finding the right person. Now, uh, and then I'm going to get into your piece. Finding the right person. And that's a challenge, right? Because what happens is, is that companies don't understand the differences between the type of salespeople they are. They lump salespeople into just one category, right? And, you know, uh, my experience and research, there's you know, five distinct um, types of, of salespeople. The other books will tell you there's four, but either case, they're similar, right? You got the hunter that enjoys, you know, hunting, prospecting, moving on quick, getting that up, set up, and teeing it up. You have an account manager. That account manager is given a book of business, right? And their job is to maintain it and grow it, but not as at the same pace as new business, but don't lose the client and make sure that you're putting all the strategies in to keep that client base. Then you have the farmer, what we call a farmer, or a person that, that is planting seeds. They have less clients, and they deal with like enterprise clients to see what other things that, that we could have that we could solve more problems for them. Mm -hmm. Then you got the closer, right? And the closer likes things being teed up. So like if you're setting up the lead piece and, they're, and they get the information, now they come in, it's their function to be able to close. They like that being teed up because it takes too much time because they're more strategic. Then you have the consultative seller that everybody should aspire to become, but they're just different. They're, they're the questions. They're going to ask questions. They're going to do, um, you know, it's like a doctor. They're going to ask out, you know, ask really what are the ramifications of the challenges you have? Make sense? All right. 100%. And so uh, with that, I just wanted to bring those up because you made some great points. So, you know, David, uh, tell us a little bit about your company and, and how can uh, people reach you to either have a question, discussion, they're, you know, they're going to be able to ask questions here. Um, we're going to respond to them. I'll send them to you. Um, we'll right. respond to the people. And um, so one, you know, a little bit about your company and two, how can people get a hold of you? Yeah. So, so Salesers is a business to business lead generation and appointment setting and sales outsourcing company. So really, you know, our, if, if, if somebody is struggling to figure out how to rapidly accelerate their sales, um, if they have a sales team that just isn't hitting quota or they're not hitting their, their sales numbers and they need to figure out uh, strategies to be able to help them and, and tee up their, their sales team for success. Uh, those are some of the situations where we really can, can help our, our clients. You know, either if you just have some questions, happy to, of course, answer some questions. If it's something that, that people want to talk about, um, you know, really having a full division that is, is, is supporting their team and helping them to accelerate their sales, helping them to crush their quota, helping them to hit their sales numbers uh, through, um, you know, generating qualified appointments for, for their team. You know, we'd love to have that, that conversation with them. And so they can, uh, folks can always come to our website. It's www.salesroads.com. That's just one word, uh, salesroads.com. Or they can call it Roads with an S. With an S. So two S's. Yep. S-A-L-E-S-R-O-A-D-S. D-S.com. Uh, and our phone number is 800 836 Four zero three three, or you can always email me just at david at salesroads.com. Happy just to connect, connect with me on LinkedIn. Happy to answer any questions people have. And and Victor, thanks so much for, for having me here. This was a lot of fun. I always have great conversations with you. I, I really enjoyed it. I think we're we're gonna we're gonna do another one because we can expand upon what we're doing. Um, so I think this was great. And some takeaways I, I want to leave the audience with, both from my experience and what you said, is this about lead generation. And you correct me if I'm wrong. Number one is, you know, you got to generate the right list of who you're going to go after. And that mm -hmm. goes with creating your target market. 
it's 100%. not that I always look at it creating a target market that's the red bullseye and then there's some outliers but anything that's off that board walk you know leave it alone now it doesn't mean you won't take some of these clients but you want to hunt the best of the best okay that's and then two once you get that list preparation mm-hmm. right you got to prepare and I love the statement you made that you know everyone that's another one everyone will say you know today's buyer is 70 percent uh, 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 more intelligent than they were before, but it's nice to hear as well, as a sales professional, as a sales leader, as a, as a company that wants to grow revenue, your team has to be 70% prepared as well. Whether it's the competition, learning the company, understanding the players, their likes, their dislikes, commonality. So you have that. And then your value proposition and understanding how to ask questions. So if you want to lead generate, those are the top pieces that you need to do at least to get started and have people managing that process. 100%. Awesome. Well, I want to thank everybody. This is the the ugly truth about sales. Again, um, the ugly truth always means it's only about, you know, don't make the statements that you're not going to follow through on. Okay. And follow through. Don't, you know, if you're going to talk to talk, walk the walk, um, don't just try to sit around a bunch of people and make uh, these business, I don't know if they're cliches or statements, and then just don't, you know, not apply it into yourself or to your companies, okay? Again, um, I'm Victor Roach, our great guest, uh, David Krieger uh, from uh, Sales Roads, and um, we are looking forward again to uh, another entrepreneurial interview. We have another one this afternoon. We have one on Friday um, and everything's going to be about sales related. So I want you to get the tips out of it. You're going to see this on YouTube. You're going to see this on, on Facebook. Uh, if you want some of the transcripts, we'll be able to provide them for you as well. Um, and follow me again, please subscribe to our channel so you can get everything that you want from YouTube. Uh, follow me on at, uh, via Rocho on Twitter. And then my website's victorrocho.com where there's a bunch of free items there and you'll see all our podcasts. Well, you know, David, as always, uh, it's great speaking with you. I think there's more that I'd like to continue talking to you about, but you know, we want to keep this in our time frame. and um, you have an excellent day and uh, sell to greatness, baby. Sounds uh, great, Victor. I always Thanks so much. Bring the trophy home. <laughs> Uh, No, this is great. Really appreciate it. Have a great day, brother. You too. Thanks, Victor. Thank you. Bye-bye.